and the spirituality of grieving, bereavement can be a catalyst for spiritual growth. We're going to talk all about growth tomorrow. It creates imbalances that have to be addressed. It reminds me of the, the concept, I'm sure you've heard of it, about, um, okay, I'll, I'll put you in the mix here. I want you to imagine that there is a man who is uh, got a got a caterpillar in front of him, right? He's watching the caterpillar and he's very excited because he knows that that caterpillar can turn into a butterfly. So eventually the caterpillar weaves its cocoon and he comes back every day to see how he's doing. And the cocoon starts to move. Oh, something's going on in there. Cocoon starts to move. Oh, what's going on in there? He sees a little slit open up. Now he's getting really excited. And he sees the, the head of the um, emerging butterfly trying to get through. It's suffering. It's in this imbalance of not being able to be who it is yet, you know, who it is, who the butterfly is going to be, and is no longer a caterpillar, but hasn't emerged as a butterfly yet, right? So there's a limbo place, this uncomfortable pressure, this uncomfortable struggle. And eventually the man gets worried because it stopped struggling. Like it gave up. Maybe it's stuck. Okay, let me go over there with some scissors and cuts open the cocoon and out plops this fat bodied short winged butterfly that can't fly. Our job is not to cut open the cocoon. I can cheer you on. I can cheer you on coming from that cocoon, but my job isn't to open it. My job is to say, I'm here. You can get through this. You're not alone. But that imbalance is absolutely necessary for growth. And we have to be comfortable with being able to sit with our clients' imbalances, including dealing with our own imbalances. Um, yeah, it's a great, I, and it, it, I think that metaphor lands really well. And it helps clients understand that while they may be going through their own process here, that you're there with them. It's, it, I, it's a great metaphor. Um, people are then forced to engage in efforts to create meaning so that they can reintegrate and find balance. This leads to personal transformation. And when you ask people, you know, um, when they're finding meaning and dealing with identity and finding benefit in the, in the uh, losses that they've had in their grieving process, looking for personal transformation is part of that. I have definitely been changed because of Damien, absolutely been changed because of him. I don't think I'd be a thanatologist, honestly, if my brother hadn't died, my grandfather died, et cetera. I don't know that I would have gone down this path. It transformed who I am in the world and not just what I do for a living, but who I am, how I understand myself in the world. So that, that personal transformation can be extremely powerful. One's spiritual needs can fluctuate through the mourning process as well. You may find that somebody is really kind of focused on dealing with the changes in their spirituality or the challenges of their religion or turning towards their religious beliefs, even more so now that there's been a loss. It's not always a negative thing, um, but you may find that the spiritual needs fluctuate just like the grieving process does. It's affected by one's individual development and cultural modes of expression. And I think we got into that quite a bit beforehand. It can give hope, comfort, strength, inner resources and support. So as you can imagine, looking the other way when it comes to spirituality is not gonna be uh, helpful. It really is essential. It's not even optional, it's essential. So what are clinical considerations here? Explore how clients draw on beliefs and spiritual convictions to navigate the grieving process. Be a companion in the exploration. Don't offer definitive answers. All right. Deal with difficult topics courageously and honestly. Don't shy away. That's for you and for them too, right? Explore and reinforce those beliefs, remembering they are a source of strength. Be aware and attend to the spiritual crisis that may occur as a result of the loss. Be open to exploring the various ways that religious beliefs encourage guidance in finding meaning and suffering. Support hope support compassion. Welcome uh, clients to share post-death encounters. Uh, be willing to hear experiences and beliefs that are foreign to you. 
become more familiar with religious and spiritual traditions. Get curious. There are a ton of resources out there, um, you know, because this isn't just a psychological topic in regard to death, loss, and grief, right? This is it falls into so many different kinds of traditions and so many different kinds of occupations and, and focuses um, that the, uh, uh, there is a lot of information out there around that. Develop the necessary comfort and skill to deal with the client's spiritual concerns in ways most helpful to the client. Uh, uh, Tadishi and Calhoun have wonderful resources. They're huge in resiliency and post-traumatic growth. We're gonna learn all about some of the work that they did yesterday, or yesterday today. That would be weird, um, tomorrow. And, uh, uh, but I do like that that kind of really captures where I'm going with this. And remember that religious beliefs may not always be helpful, okay? And may lead to self-blame and other painful feelings and um, experiences. So making space for that too, making space to look for uh, whether or not grief has then become spiritually complicated for them. 